this is a this is a fill-in talk. Artie couldn't make it. He was going to do the uh, text mode talk. I was kind of I was actually looking forward to that one, but I'm filling in with uh, XMPP for paranoid people. Everybody has one of these slides, so I'm going to have one. I'm a hashtag beta tester. I'll be talking about that later. Uh, I also run a Tor relay just to get the shirt honest and a bunch of bridges. God bless you. Uh, I got all, my shirt the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also uh, a big fan of anti art, which is why I was looking forward to Arnie's talk. And then just because uh, we had an incident this year with. Uh, an NSA uh, speaker who canceled pretty much because my handle is NSA key. Yeah, that actually, that actually happened. They are more afraid of me than I am of them, apparently. Uh, I, I feel like putting in every presentation I do from now on that I am not affiliated with the NSA. That's what you want us to say. Yeah, it's a, it's a double bluff. Hey, how about a different name? Hmm? No. Uh, Let them change their are, name. There, although there are several thousand uh, NSA and GCHQ code names I could go with, just to keep trolling them. Uh, which leads me into the next bullet point. I did troll uh, John Schindler on Twitter. Uh, if you go back to about April, you'll see that. I'm not going to get into it, but it's quite hilarious. Uh, this is kind of the overview. I'm going to talk about uh, just XMPP from a very like general perspective in case none of you have ever heard that bit of alphabet soup before. And then I'll talk about my actual XMPP setup, which was modeled after OTR.IM, which I'll get into later. And then I just tell you what I told you about at the end. XMPP, uh, it, was, it, it was first called Jabber, but now it's the Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol. Uh, it's completely open, but first, uh, Jabber server implementation is Jabber D, which was released in 1999. And then there was actually a working group formed in 02. Uh, because of the word extensible, some of you probably figured out that XML is heavily involved, and it is. Oh, uh, more of a tell you what I'm going to tell you slide. Uh, what it is, I think I kind of covered that. Pros and cons of the protocol. More cons of the protocol because, let's face it, it's, it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> it really is, and then I'll talk about clients and servers a bit. These are uh, people who use it. Uh, League of Legends took, I think it was eJabberD, and they like regularly brag about the scale they handle, like billions of messages a month, 70 million users. Uh, Google Talk used to use it, or at least had an XMPP bridge. I think they still use it on the back end, but it's all. Oh, okay. I, I didn't remember how that went. Uh, I know the Facebook Messenger has an XMPP gateway, but internally they talk with their own proprietary garbage. Uh, CryptoCat basically just uses a Jabber server and Bosch to do uh, web chats. WhatsApp and Kick fork the protocol, and then they decide to be evil and not give back. I'll talk about what they fixed later. And then uh, smart meters talk XMPP. So if you really feel like digging into the specs, I, I'm, not, I'm not making any recommendations, but you could probably make NES give you a much smaller bill if you can talk XMPP. Just saying. <coughs> uh, the good thing, it is an open standard. Uh, Oscar was the uh, AOL Instant Messenger protocol. Uh, there are a ton of implementations on the client and server side. And then uh, I bring up Oscar. Uh, Microsoft and AOL got in sort of a, a war over the fact that Microsoft wanted MSN Messenger to support AOL Instant Messenger, and AOL didn't want that. And they went back and forth with enabling and disabling to the point that AOL built in, uh, in into the AIM client that it had to check for, the server checked for a buffer overflow in the client. And if it didn't have the buffer overflow, it wouldn't connect. And then there was a and then Microsoft leaked that, and then they got called out on it. And it's basically one of those one of those situations where I hate both companies. So the fact that they ended up with, both ended up with pile in their face was just great for me. If one of them had come out ahead, it would have been like, well, okay, at least one of them got the short end of the stick. But both of them ended up looking bad, so it was double the fun. Oh, it's decentralized. You don't have to go to any one server, uh, you can run your own and it'll talk to other servers as long as the crypto is right. 
Do you use the Bob and Alice examples? Bob, Bob at example.com can chat with Alice at example.net. Um, if you have, if you're rolling a server for like your company, just for internal stuff, you just comment out the server to server stuff and point DNS records, and you're good to go. Most of them have a logging module, which we're not going to get into that because this is for paranoid people, not losers. And that's loser with a U for anyone wondering. Now I talk into the uh, terrible things about it. Uh, Kick and WhatsApp fixed the uh, battery problem and didn't give back because I guess they want to make money and being doing the right thing doesn't, it, it conflicts with that. Uh, it will drain batteries really quickly. It's kind of like running GPS in that regard. Uh, most of them just take each or D and do their mods and do not give back. Oh, I guess it drains battery quickly because it's constantly holding the server. Yeah, you, you can adjust that a little bit. That only that only mitigates some of the aches and pains with it. Uh, the protocol is so bloated, nobody's bothered to implement the entire thing. Like there, there's stuff that will probably never get implemented because why? E it, but if you want like the most complete experience from a server standpoint, eJabberD is pretty much your option. Oh, like I said, nobody cares about most of the protocol. I mean, I kind of had it there. Uh, one thing I forgot is that <coughs> I forgot to put a screenshot in this of why I will not use eJabberD, but there's plenty of text for that, which right here. Oh, uh, yeah, eJabberD, uh, the, uh, the devs suffer from a distinct form of uh, rare brain disease in which they think that they cannot do SSL and password hashing at the same time. If I had to change these slides, I would include a screenshot of that. But it's very easy to Google. They're idiots. There's just no other way. That's probably the nicest way I can put it. They're just, they're dumb. They need to get hit with the bat. If any of you are going to the Networking of the Hill workshop, you'll see the bat. Oh, now the clients of oh, Pigeon. Oh, it's kind of popular, but... Lid purple is garbage. They don't take security fixes seriously. They've left bugs for years and they're like, oh, this isn't an issue, even though people can get up. They don't care. Uh, there's Adium, which I, I'm not an OS 10 user. Does, Ad, does Adium use lid purple? Okay, so it's also probably garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not very kind if you haven't picked up on that yet. Uh, there's McAber and Biddleby. Biddleby is like a it's kind of hackish, but I love it. You can use an IRC client to connect to most uh, most protocols. Does uh, it use libpermanent too? Though? It doesn't have to. Oh, it, it doesn't yeah, have it, to. it's entirely it's optional, and I don't. Is uh, that spelled correctly? What? It'll be yes. Okay. Uh, and then Macabre is basically a terminal client. It's, it's not. It's B I T L B E. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, folks. I didn't. I didn't QA these. And then there's a check secure for Android, and then. Uh, there's PSI and PSI Plus, which I think pretty much only Russian Carters use, but that's neither here nor there. All right, uh, now we shift to where I just talk about uh, putting the screws to the NSA or <coughs> anybody else who wants to keep your packets. Um, if you don't, if you don't care about rolling your own server, uh, I have at the bottom like jabber.ccc.de is really popular, but it's been around since 03, and too many people use it. So if it gets DDoS, there's a bunch of people who can't talk to each other, so spread out. The whole point is federation, so you don't have a centralized authority. So uh, ccc.d is awesome, but don't use it. Uh, Rise Up, it, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of hipsters. They have an invite-only system. Uh, mod, I'll talk about mod OTR, I promise. Uh, OTR.IN is what the rest of this was modeled on. They were, they do really cool stuff. I never got to test uh, Rose.IO and <coughs> Calix Institute. They're kind of on the same level as OTR.IN. All right, there was a, an encryption manifesto for XMPP back in 2014. It mentioned forward secrecy, which in my opinion, if you're doing encrypt, uh, encrypted communications and forward secrecy is not part of the picture, then it's a, what you're doing is a stupid joke and you should stop. Put on a clown costume while you do it for all I care. 
Um, of course, having a CA is required. Uh, Let's Encrypt is about to become a thing. Hopefully that will uh, break, that will uh, disrupt things, I think is the buzzword people would say. All right. Uh, so you want your own server. Uh, this is more of a tell them what I'm about to tell them slide. I forgot to put bullet point in here because I modified these like in a lot of this talk like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> But anyways, uh, I'll talk about the uh, elliptical curve stuff as well. That's the only thing worth mentioning that's not on here. Uh, let's assume you're going to run a public server. Uh, let's say it's a surveillance target. You have activist types using it, like say Rise Up, which is pretty much geared for activists. Uh, you can you can make the man's job harder. It's it's really hard, but it's not impossible. <laughs> I'm just gonna let that sink in. I did these before the uh, whole Hulk Hogan Gawker fiasco happened, and now this is like funnier to me. <laughs> and uh, I, I have to explain the joke. The Five Eyed Boogeyman is the uh, Five Eyes nations, basically all like Canada, the U.S., U.K., New Zealand, and Australia. They all kind of collaborate on mass surveillance. All right. Uh, what follows is kind of completely academic. If a, gov, if a .gov wants to ruin your day, they're going to. I, I, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't stop. If they decide they're going to own you, you might as well just give up. It's going to happen. Uh, the deck is really stacked against us normals because elite, blatantly illegal stuff like the uh, what, what uh, was retroactively given immunity under the uh, FISA Amendments Act of 2008, uh, yeah. They were tapping basically everything in the U.S. and it got the whistle got blown on it, and Congress passed retroactive immunity during an election, a presidential election at that. Oh, um, I, I think that I think where I say the game is rigged, that's pretty much implied by what I said, but I'm just stating it in case any of you are like slow or anything. All right, uh, general requirements: uh, force encryption. Only good crypto, only new TLS versions, no weak ciphers, only use forward secrecy, and then I'll talk about the uh, EC crypto. That's, that's kind of an open research question, but I'll talk about that briefly. And then, in case none of that is good enough, we'll force off the record chats, which adds end-to-end -end encryption, so you don't have to trust the server. <clears throat> kind of a nice thing to have. And then uh, we'll throw in a Tor service, Disable logging is <coughs> fun, and then because of all the uh, SSL settings, any clients will pretty much be forced to use newer software. And uh, you can have something slightly old with this setup, and it will not work. Which that's kind of the point. It's kind of like taking a two by four to the loser's face and telling them upgrade. There's XP one. <laughs> I'm gonna need this much to do. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, SSL two and three heavy bullets. So you, yeah, they, they are dead to me. They are dead to most of the community. Use TLS uh, one point X. Uh, I use one point two. Uh, if you're supporting old Android phones, you're pretty much, like. Like this cheesy burner right here that I paid like 50 bucks for, uh, you have to enable like uh, 1.0, uh, kill off all the weak ciphers, anything involving RC4, MD5 for message authentication codes, anything like that. Uh, client cipher ordering needs to be violently ignored. Uh, the clients don't know what they're doing, so force it at the server level and things will be nice. Uh, I think the IAM Observatory is down at the moment. It was uh, as of about a week ago. That will let you check uh, what the uh, ciphers are supported and all of that kind of fun stuff with any given XMPP server. It's, it's a really handy resource if you want to evaluate just how seriously a server operator takes their setup. Now what's magical about forward secrecy, let's say somebody pops the, the server and grabs keys. 
Everything in the past can be decrypted. With forward secrecy, not so much. They could grab any uh, existing session keys on the box and any future ones as long as they like, you know, regularly collect them and decrypt any present and future chats. But anything from the past, they can't. Well, unless they just brute force it or whatever. Uh, the short version is use uh, any of the uh, Diffie-Hellman algorithms or GTFO. Anything else, not worth your time. Okay, this is where there's uh, lots of tinfoil, and I even brought a paper that was published within the last week. Um, this is what covers session keys. RSA just does the initial negotiation. By default, uh, Procity uses uh, SecP384R1, which if any of you, has anyone heard about the uh, NSA uh, changing, getting uh, the notice out about quantum uh, crypto and changing what algorithms are good for top secret information and so on? Do I have any hands on that? Okay, well, th this uh, specific curve is still good for that. I double checked that. So if you're dealing with, if you're uh, okay with the curves, then you can just leave that alone. Uh, NIST has a bad reputation because of what happened in the last few years with Snowden disclosures. But what's interesting in this paper, a riddle wrapped, within an, wrapped in an enigma, I, I had it here if anyone wants to go through it. Uh, the curves were picked in the 80s and 90s, and the people who picked them were from the Information Assurance Division. The NSA didn't have its accident, which turned it into a comic book supervillain until 9-11. So they didn't start like trying to subtly backdoor things because they <clears throat> turned evil until after then. The curves pre the uh, NIST curves predate that, so they might be okay, but they might be too old. In any case, I don't want the curve used in Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin's a joke, and if there's any like cryptographic break with that curve. I'm going to be too busy laughing to care about the fact that I have to change my settings. It's just a baked in joke. I know it's kind of frivolous, but I do whimsical things for no apparent reason. All right. Uh, the UK is currently trying, I don't know if they've made end-to-end uh, -end crypto illegal yet or if they're trying to. I know they're trying to. That's the last I heard. But the servers can't read your chats if you've done this uh, correctly. Uh, there's actually a, a mod you can install on each D, which is also called mod OTR, that will man in the middle the OTR sessions. So really, manually inspect the fingerprints. Yeah, it, it, that's, it, that's how you know you're being man in the middle. Uh, you pretty much have a situation where your users don't have to trust you. Uh, OTR, I think it uses DSA, which is kind of scary, but it's still forward secrecy, so it's probably okay. Uh, but th there's some hilarious brain confusion because mod OTR for prosody is awesome for privacy, but mod OTR for e D, mm, I just explained that, and it's not very good. Um, I'm just going to ignore that last bullet point. <laughs> we'll move right along. Let's just say I'm not talking about the deprecated plain text protocol for moving files. <laughs> this is what happens when you when someone sends you a message in Signal and they forget to uh, make sure that uh, the chats are not plain text. Don't be like this guy. This actually happened to me. Like I have I have an internet friend in Washington where. Uh, Consuming marijuana and things derived from it is legal, and I guess he got high and forgot to set up crypto when he sent me a text, and then he wondered what happened. <laughs> and this is why we use OTR. This is, a, this is probably still top secret, and no, I don't care. If you have a security clearance, sorry, not sorry. I should have put a trigger warning at the beginning. Oh. All this redacted stuff, I mean, you can see the non-redacted part, they couldn't decrypt anything. So OTR does work, or at least it did as of March 16th, 2012. All right, uh, this is the part where I give kind of, I go kind of high level again and talk about like, I'll talk about logging and then uh, what attackers do and don't get, <coughs> and then there'll be 
stuff you guys probably don't care about after that. All right, uh, government PR types like to say metadata doesn't matter. It's an activity record. They just, you know, it's they're doing public relations damage control, so they don't spin it that way. Yet the CIA will say, you know, metadata is good enough to send drones at people. So keep that in mind. Metadata kills. Seriously, no joking. Oh, uh, Tor hidden service or are your friend. Uh, it's not quite seven proxies, but it's good. Oh, uh, and, th and this will come in play because uh, later, because if someone hacks the server that you're using and, get, and goes to get IPs, if you're using the hidden service, it'll show up as localized. So that, it, you know, that's like the last line of defense, I guess. If, you know, they can't, they can't figure out where you are. They think you're hiding in the machine, like it needs a hacker inside sticker slapped on it. Oh, we'll also disable logging because there's no reason to keep logs really other than, you know, t you know debugging stuff. And if it's in the U.S. and you're, you know, they can send a subpoena at you, you can go, oh, sorry, I don't keep logs. Bye. Now, let's say if you're using my GitHub project for this, there is one, by the way. Let's say you get hacked. They'll get the private key and any uh, session keys, uh, currently connected users and their IPs, uh, frequency of messages sent, uh, any buddy list, contact names, that sort of thing, and of course, password hashes. Don't reuse passwords. Don't knowingly use anything that stores passes in clear text. Uh, XMPP.net will tell you what server it runs, and if you're not going to roll your own, if you see eJabberD, run. Just keep running. Oh, uh, okay, I guess that's enough there. Uh, what they don't get are uh, past session keys, uh, message content, of course, no server logs, and then uh, any other, like, they don't get disconnect and reconnect times unless they're like, sniffing the traffic going to the box. Oh, and something else, this is also a recent development. Uh, if you have example.com talking to example.net, that someone that's like a, a global adversary can see that those two servers are talking to each other. There's a, a, a module called Mod Onions that'll uh, do all of that over a hidden service just to frustrate traffic analysis even further. Uh, a lot of these servers I mentioned previously just implemented mod onions within the last two weeks. And I'm just kind of sitting back watching the fireworks. Let them, I, I'm letting the big boys work out the bugs before I push it to GitHub. Uh, if you actually want to do all of this, grab a clean Ubuntu or Debian box, get clone my project, Tweak the config. It's basically as simple as adding whatever domain you're choosing and then editing DNS records. Of course, getting a signed cert. And then you should get uh, all 100s on the uh, IAM Observatory. There's contact stuff. Uh, if you actually want to reach me, ask for my PGP card because It's the last token slide, I promise. <laughs> don't verify don't verify key fingerprints like over Jabber. Do it over another medium. And I just realized this, I've been too far away from this. Oh, uh, here are other references. I, I've had like everything's been had little numbers all throughout. I actually wrote a guide that needs slight updating for anybody who wants to know the like the guts of what I did and what's detailed explanations, I actually broke all of that out. That all of this took all this research only took me like a week, which was kind of nice. I could do it and forget about it. Here's some further reading. And does anybody have any questions? Do you mean thoughts or opinions on like a Tor chat or BitMessage or Pond or the other you know, they're just trying to solve the same problem. I haven't fooled with those personally. I just haven't had time. But I'm interested. So, uh, 
I, I used each Everdeen at one point. I, okay. I came into a place and was handed each Everdeen. Okay. And uh, quickly saw the problem that you were, you were referring to with the plant, the passwords. Um, I moved to uh, a daemon called Open Fire. Have you seen that? I have. And thoughts? Oh, uh, I haven't used it. Okay. Uh, I went with Prosody because it looked simple enough. <coughs> okay. The, the th this did everything right, and you could do all the encryption right. But it also had a web interface that made it easy for non-people to administer. Yeah, yeah, I'm one of those people. Give me Unix tools or give me Understand. dev. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm one of those weird people. If I if, if web browsers didn't require GUIs, I would just run a terminal at all times. Okay. Anybody else? What do you got? All right. So Alice is talking to Bob. Yeah. But Bob has had the rubber hose treatment by somebody and now is compromised. What sort of protections does this afford Alice if Bob is compromised, the encryption is all good at that end? What is being obfuscated from Bob about Alice over XMVP and the security? Oh, well, uh, if Alice is using uh, a, a Tor hidden service on her end, then there's that. There's no location stuff unless she told Bob something. And hopefully, uh, Bob uh, didn't behave in narc like behavior like all the <laughs> previous chats. But pretty much, it goes back to endpoints being full of failure, which is why, uh, in a certain threat model, you would think the server would get owned, and then they'd go, oh, we have all these endpoints. Let's hack each one individually that we think we have that's worth targeting. Uh, hidden service would help uh, mitigate some of that. But if, if Bob gets owned by Eve, and Eve can read all of their chats, then it's game over. I mean, like I said, it's not perfect. I mean, if, if, if Eve and the NSA want to come to Alice and Bob, Alice and Bob are toast. Anybody else? What have you got? Sorry, I know this is the second one. Um, you mentioned uh, Diffie Hellman. Do uh, you have any comments on the NSA owning all the Diffie Hellman common crimes and possibly oh. setting those as a security mark? Maybe. Yeah, um, I think that it, I haven't had nearly enough caffeine to adequately answer that question. <laughs> uh, this paper, prob this beautiful <coughs> paper probably does. Okay. Uh, if you want to thumb through it, it's like 20 pages, all one column. Well, I, I, I know the answer. I mean, but that's okay. Thank you. Oh, it, 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 please enlighten us. Seriously. Well, well so basically there's, uh, and the way Debbie Hellman works is there's known crimes, and basically everybody was using the same crimes in open SSL and, and common libraries. And uh, so what they did is they basically rainbow tabled all those crimes. Um, and so they've been breaking Divi Hellman for years. Now. This, this was recent research, right? It was recent research. Well, okay, well it's I mean, speculative that that's what they're using, but a lot of people think that's what they're using. Okay, well, my, ex my official excuse for not being up to speed on that is I was helping organize this beautiful Fair con. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, take, it's taken up like all of my free time for the last three months. Right. So in short, if you're using perfect forward secrecy, with Diffie Hellman, generate new primes. As simple as that. Generate new primes, folks. Or use primes bigger than 10, 1024. Uh, Wasn't it something like 90% of the top 100 yeah, elections were used? Yeah, it's a lot. Prime, so just. It's the default setting. It's very expensive to do that, but when it gets 90% of the internet's traffic. Oh, yeah, then it's definitely worth <laughs> doing that. A $15 billion data center. Right, right. Totally good to go. Anybody else have anything? of the, the problem on the client side being compromised. Uh, are you aware of any clients that take any extra steps to make sure that there's no leakage on that side? I mean, you could, you could uh, look, you could use like hardening wrapper. I think it has like a little sub-program to check for build flags and stuff like that. Uh, you know, help with certain classes of things. Uh, cli clients are kind of a messy subject. I mean, it's it, it's a beautiful disaster. Just run the least, run the minimum software you have to. That's the only real recommendation I can make that is even remotely accessible to normal users. You had a question. Are the footnotes and additional reading available? Uh, yes, I have a uh, I have a previous version of this. Oh, uh, I'm going to loop here. Yeah, uh, I will tweet out a link to the slides as seen here. I'll probably correct the bit be typo and then put them up and pretend it never happened. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make all of this available. 
and, and it'll be on a bigisp.com. Yes, I actually own that domain. <laughs> that was that was the other thing that uh, triggered the uh, NSA guys. I think uh, they they thought they were being. I, I guess they thought I was the Chinese or something. <laughs> Which is funny because I have here. Because I had yeah, I, I haven't been sent on a one way trip to Cuba yet. Oh, uh, anything else? Oh wow. That was fast. We got like a half hour. You got any ASCII art or ANSI art to show us? <laughs> if I had an internet connection, I could fill in the rest of the time literally with ANSI art. You said if the NSA wants to on you, like if they want Bob and Alice. They yeah, if, if they want a specific person, you're going to get God. I mean, there's there there's really no avoiding that. I don't think. Yeah. But there's the XKCD with the hammer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, something else. Not long after the, uh, I, I'm going to tell this story because screw those people. I don't care. Uh, this laptop. Uh, I bought an SSD for it off of Amazon that, uh, like, right after that whole uh, scaring the NSA incident happened, and it shipped from Baltimore. So I was like, hmm, seems legit. Maybe this got interdicted, maybe it did. So I've been, I've been uh, doing some rather, uh, let's say, questionable things to flush that out. And if I'm not if I'm not in Cuba by next year, like if I'm not like renditioned to Gitmo, I'll probably talk about that at Freaknik 20. <laughs> and Alonka has said I'm not allowed to get arrested between now and then, <laughs> so I, I I don't know how that'll play out. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, uh, Mr. AV person, I believe we're done. All right, thank you very much.